A desire of land and control in the United States led to the American Revolutionary War. The last and most important battle was the Siege of Yorktown. The battle led to the victory of the United States and the surrender of the Great Britain, also the peace treaty signing in Paris and economic collapse of America. The British government asked for taxes and claimed it was for their own good to contribute to the empire, and the colonists was very upset. Some colonists dressed up as Native Americans and sneaked onto the merchant ships, and dumped 342 chests of British tea into the harbour. British soldiers were asking for taxes and the colonists disagreed, it started out with a little brawl between the British soldiers and the colonists, but then it went from brawl to a bloody slaughter killing children and other colonists who is in the fight. During this siege the enemy has thrown more than 8,000 bombs of 100, 150, 200 and even 250 pounds at us. We had more than 17 or 18,000 killed and wounded. Supposedly, the enemy also counted more than 10,000 men wounded and dead. General Cornwallis surrendered and told his soldiers to raise the flag of truce. It was said that the British band played the world turned upside down after surrendering. Approximately 500 British, 80 Americans and 200 French soldiers were killed and wounded. There was the peace treaty after the war between Great Britain and America. It was officially signed on September 3, 1783. Both sides used up a lot of money to fight the war, for example to buy guns, materials for building, and ammunition. A great deal of money is lost. Becoming a prisoner of war British soldiers received malaria in America due to no antibody to the virus. Malaria is a virus that will go around from people to people, carried by mosquitoes. If you get used to it is fine but if you are not your body can get worse and all kinds of symptoms will occur. The British destroyed most of the Americans' ships during the war, so that lead to a huge impact on America's trade system. The Americans also have to make laws and adjustments also difficult decisions to make America a country. There was also reported food gotten stolen by British soldiers from the farmers' crops, making it not enough food for the American citizens. People remember the day where they gained independence from the British Empire. They look at the painting and drawings to remind them that they are free from the British's rule. People now also remember the brave heroes who fought inside the war, for example George Washington. Outside redoubts number 9 and 10 of the British, the American trenches were within 150 yards, on October 14. For the attack that evening, General George Washington gave the orders that all guns inside distance start firing at the redoubts to reduce the defense of the stronghold. George Washington planned to use the surprise attack method to attack because of the moonless night. To make the darkness stronger, he arranged all soldiers to remain silent, also ordering that no soldier should load his musket. Redoubt 10 was near the river and only 70 men is guarding, while Redoubt 9 was a one half of a mile inland, and was guarded by 120 British and Germans together. Both redoubts were heavily armed with lines of abatis circling them, along with muddy trenches 25 yards outside the redoubts. Washington arranged a plan in which the French would launch an attack on the Fusiliers redoubt, the French would assault Redoubt 9 and the Americans Redoubt 10, half an hour later. Redoubt 9 would be invaded by 400 regular French soldiers under the command of the German Lieutenant Colonel Wilhelm von Zweibrücken and Redoubt 10 would be assaulted by 400 light infantry troops under the instructions of Alexander Hamilton. At 6.30 pm, the first gun fired on the Fusiliers Redoubt. At other places in the line, movements were made as if getting ready for an attack on Yorktown itself, which caused the British to be alerted. With bayonets farmed, the Americans charged towards Redoubt 10. Hamilton sent Lieutenant Colonel John Lawrence around to the back of the redoubt to prevent the British from retreating. 
The Americans arrived at the redoubt and began crazily hacking through the British wooden defences with their axes. A British watcher called a challenge, and then fired at the Americans. The Americans responded by charging with their bayonets towards the redoubt. They cut through the abatis, crossed a muddy trench and climbed the barricade into the redoubt. The British fire was strong, but the Americans outnumbered them. The British threw frags at the Americans with little damage. Men in the trench stood on the shoulders of their comrades to climb into the redoubt. The bayonet fight cleared the British out of the redoubt and almost the entire garrison was captured, including the controller of the redoubt, Major Campbell. In the attack on Redoubt 10, the Americans suffered 9 dead and 25 wounded. At the same time the French assault started, but they were stopped by the abatis, which was not damaged by the cannon fire. The French began to chop through the abatis and a Hessian watcher guard came out and asked who was there. The French didn't reply, then the sentry fired as did other Hessians in the defense position. The French soldiers shot back, and then raced towards the redoubt. The Germans wanted to fire at the French soldiers climbing over the walls but the French fired a volley, holding the Germans back. The Hessians then took a protective position behind some barrels but as soon as the French got ready for a bayonet charge the Hessians threw down their weapons and surrendered. With the successful conquer of redoubts 9 and 10, General Washington was able to have his cannon shell surround the town from three different directions and also the Allies moved some of their artillery into the redoubts. On October 15, General Cornwallis turned all of his guns onto the nearest Allied control point. He then he gave a command of a storming group of 350 British troops under the instructions of Colonel Robert Abercrombie to assault the lines and spike the American and French putted, also the cannons. The Americans and French were sleeping and unprepared. As the British charged Abercrombie shouted, push on my brave boys, and skin the bastards. The British storming group managed to spike several cannons in the parallel and then spiked the guns on a not complete redoubt. A French party quickly came over and drove them out of the their lines and pushed Colonel Robert Abercrombie back to Yorktown. The British had been capable to spike six guns, but by the morning American engineers repaired them all. The bombardment resumed with the American and French troops joined in a contest to see who could do the most damage to the enemy blockade and defenses. On the morning of October 16, more Allied guns were in line and the fire went intense. In need. Cornwallis tried to retreat his army across the York River to Gloucester Point. Only a little amount crossed, but basically failed. Then it led to the British surrendering.